Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Microbiology with Summi. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for the latest upcoming videos. This video is on introduction to air microbiology. So let's start with it. Let's start with a short introduction. Air is a gaseous cover over the earth's surface. It is a mixture of permanent gases, variable amount of water vapor and dust particle. The composition of air is not constant. So air is a mixture of gases as well as water vapors and dust particle. The composition of air changes. It is not constant. But air is a mixture of about 78% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen, 0.9% argon, 0.04% carbon dioxide, 1% water vapor and very small amount of other gases. Air is not a good source or a good medium for growth of microorganisms because air lacks nutrients and required amount of moisture for growth of microorganisms. Now as we all know microorganism needs specific nutrients and water for their growth, synthesis of cellular components and multiplication. Now these all things that is nutrients as well as water is absent in air. So air is not a good source or we can say a good medium for growth and multiplication of microorganisms. Air has no specific indigenous microflora like soil, food, milk and sewage. Now due to lack of nutrients and water, air has no specific microflora like other sources we can say like soil, food, milk and sewage. These things have their indigenous microflora. Microorganisms in air are introduced in air from different sources like soil, water, plants, animals and some industrial as well as some human activities. So these all things that is activities of human beings, activities from industrial areas, animals, plants as well as different sources like soil, water, sewage, all these things introduce microorganisms in air. Now let's see the sources of microorganisms in air. The major source of microorganisms in air are both land and water. So from land as well as water these microorganisms get entered in the air. The wind creates dust from soil and this dust particle add thousands of microorganisms into air. Now when wind blows dust gets created and when this dust enters in the air this dust carries thousands of microorganisms along with it and thus introduces these microorganisms in the air. Further, the microorganisms get attached to dried leaves, straws and dust particles. Microorganisms can travel a long distance and get carried away by wind. Now, when these dried leaves, straws and dust particles, when they are present in the atmosphere or we can say when they are present on the land surface, now these microorganisms get attached to these things that is dried leaves, straws and dust and when the wind blows, the wind carries these things along with it and introduce thousands of microorganisms in air. And as we know, microorganisms are so small in size that we can't even observe them without microscope. So these microorganisms can easily travel long distance and can get carried away by wind. Every man-made activity increases number of microorganisms in air. Now there are various man-made activities which increases the load of microorganisms in air. The water droplets containing microorganisms are added in air from natural water bodies like rivers, lakes and oceans. Most of the water droplets are produced from top of 0.1 mm water surface. So water droplets also have microorganisms and these water droplets are added in air from various water bodies like river, lakes and ocean. And these water droplets are created from the top surface of 0.1 mm 
of water further human being itself is a source of microorganisms in air as i told you before human being introduces thousands of microorganism by its daily activities in the air the microbes from oral nasal and rectal passage from man and animal enter in air the activities like coughing sneezing laughing talking singing increases the load of biological aerosols in air so the various activities like sneezing laughing talking singing coughing these activities which we do in our day to day life increases the load of microorganisms in air a single sneeze contains 10000 to 1 lakh microorganisms air lacks nutrients and require amount of moisture so microorganisms cannot survive in air but only drought resistant pathogenic microbes are able to survive in air so there thousands of microorganisms are introduced in air but they are unable to survive in air for longer period of time because air lacks nutrients as well as the required amount of moisture but there are some resistant pathogenic microorganisms which are able to survive in air various activities like industrial activities agriculture and municipal activities also increases the load of microorganisms in air as i told you before there are various human activities which we carry out in our day to day life such as um, sneezing coughing that all things are there only but various industries as well as various agricultural activities whereas various municipal activities these all things also increases the load of microorganisms in air activities like sprinkler irrigation of crops effluents from sewage treatment plant grain thrashing operations trickling filter beds in sewage treatment plant all these activities increases microorganisms in air now let's see some important definitions first one is infectious dust dust in the air arises from sand soil clothing and carpets so the source of dust in air is sand soil clothing as well as carpet dusting of clothes carpets they create dust dust usually contains all saprophytic microorganisms from soil the dust loaded with saprophytic microorganisms from soil is harmless for human beings now this dust usually have saprophytic microorganisms and which are harmless for human beings but if they have parasitic or we can say pathogenic microorganisms then they can cause harm to human beings but if the dust is loaded with airborne pathogenic microflora then the dust is called as infectious dust but see here i have mentioned if the dust have pathogenic microflora which is present on that dust and if we inhale that dust then the person can get infected okay and that dust which contains pathogen airborne pathogenic microflora is called as infectious dust airborne pathogens are added on air by human secretions when the human secretions dry on dust and cause infectious dust now how this airborne pathogens are created now we say air don't have any indigenous microflora then from where this airborne pathogens comes these airborne pathogens are added by human beings itself when human being sneezes cough this various activity when the human secretions are added on the dust or in the atmosphere we can say and when the dust gets that infectious microflora then that dust is called as infectious dust and that pathogens are called as airborne pathogens infectious dust generally created by human activities like coughing sneezing these nasal and throat secretions are left on handkerchief they settle on the floor bed clothes okay now what happens whenever a person is infected uh, that person may cough uh, it may sneeze or and or we can say the nasal and the throat uh, secretions which are we uh, by coughing and sneezing we introduce in that atmosphere we use handkerchief uh, or we can say when we sneeze then this droplet settle on the floor beds clothes these things add microflora to the dust 
now what happens the moisture content dries up and the residue is left behind now when we sneeze there is some moisture as well as that pathogenic microorganism now that moisture will dry up after some time but the microflora is still present there the the residue contains that harmful pathogen now what happens later later this residue that is the microorganisms get distributed in atmosphere okay now once the moisture content is dried up the residue is left behind with the pathogenic microorganism further these pathogenic microorganisms get distributed in atmosphere and once a healthy person inhales that infectious dust which is loaded with this airborne pathogen then that person gets infected so this is all about infectious dust the second one is droplets when a person suffering with respiratory tract infection sneezes or coughs the person exhales millions of micro droplets with saliva mucus and microorganism such micro particles are called as droplet now when a person is suffering from any respiratory tract infection or cough and cold then that person normally sneezes or that person coughs now when that person sneezes or cough it exhales or we can say introduce millions of micro droplets in the atmosphere that is now that micro droplet contains saliva mucus as well as that harmful pathogenic microorganisms now such micro droplets that is such micro particles are called as droplets the size of these droplet is larger than 0.1 mm in diameter the larger droplets settle down very fast before drying but if the person inhales these droplets are trapped in nasopharynx and nasal baffles and they are unable to reach the lungs now these droplets are not very harmful because these droplets are larger than 0.1 mm in size huh? the larger droplet what happened it settles down very fast huh? so as it settles down it takes the microorganisms also with it and they dry also very fast now what happens now before drying if a healthy person inhales these droplets then these as these droplets are of larger size that is 0.1 mm these droplets get trapped in nasopharynx as well as nasal buffle, baffles of that human being and thus these droplets and that microorganisms are unable to reach the lungs so this is about droplets these droplets are not very much dangerous as i told you before. the next one is droplet nuclei the droplets which are dried up due to evaporation of moisture content and only the dried mucus and living bacteria are present such droplets are called as droplet nuclei now previously i have explained you how a droplet is formed now once imagine ki that droplet has settled down on the floor and the moisture content has evaporated now what is left behind a dried mucus as well as the pathogenic bacteria now such droplets are called as droplet nuclei the size of droplet nuclei is less than 0.1 mm such droplet nuclei can remain suspended in air for longer period of time as they are light in weight they can travel long distance as well as they can remain suspended in air for longer period of time the dried mucus present in droplet nuclei protect the microorganisms present at the center now uh, as the moisture evaporates the rim, it, the only dried mucus as well as the pathogenic microorganisms are left behind and this dried mucus protects the microorganisms which are present at the center when these droplet nuclei are inhaled by a healthy person and due to small size this droplet nuclei enters easily in the lungs of a person the chances of spread of airborne infection via droplet nuclei are more now what happens these droplet nuclei are smaller in size as well as the pathogenic microorganisms are protected by dried mucus and they can travel in air for a longer period of time now when this droplet nuclei is inhaled by a healthy person these droplet nuclei directly enters in the lungs of a person because these droplet nuclei are small in size so they can easily enter in lungs of a person and thus here the chances of spread of airborne infection via this droplet nuclei are 
more as compared to infectious dust as well as droplets this was all about introduction to air microbiology if you liked my videos please like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching